The doors are opening for the first visitors. The joy of Indian boys is noticeable. But do they have an idea of what to expect with cheap self-assembly furniture? Do it yourself uh, uh, is not our thing as of now. It definitely doesn't look like a shoe rack and I have absolutely no idea how to get, get this done. And what does the customer really need? It's said that Indians don't use knives and then all the complicated Swedish names. I am looking to buy the scub hanging thing. It, it was written scub hanging. Yes. And can you serve meatballs in India? Yummy! This opening seems to be a challenge for everyone. Everyone used our exhibition like a playground. If Swedes think Indian, what comes to mind? In a country with 1.4 billion inhabitants, you should be able to sell a lot. We know Indians as friendly people, but they do well without cutlery and seats and think that cows are sacred. Should leather seating sets or colourful storage jars even be sold here? That's why this German has been researching the needs of Indians for four years. Never before has so much work been put into a market analysis. We did up to 1,000 home visits. I myself have visited about 100 homes. I tried a lot to understand how they live today. But what are their dreams? What do they want to change? We can explore briefly before the people are let in and try to understand what is different here compared to us. The colours look a lot brighter. Maybe Mia Lundström knows more. The Swede has visited over 150 Indians and even inspected their beds. They are extremely close. They want to be very, very close to their children and, and that's why they stay in bed up to eight years of age. And the interesting thing is what happens after that. How do we give kids private space and how do we show that we understand that kids also want to, to have their own little space now and then during the days. There are hardly any children's rooms in India. That's why we always find an extra bed in the main bedroom, offering the family more space. And everywhere in the exhibition we discover things for children. And what's different in the kitchen? We asked John, the store manager. There's something interesting here. A flat pan for baking bread? And chapatis is one of the main stables in India. Yeah. You know, whether you live in the south or the north of India, rice is big here, but the chapati is so important to the daily meals within uh, the home. Everything has to be as cheap as possible as well. Over 1,000 products are under $4. Does this work out? We have adjusted the packaging for some of our cutleries to say, OK, what is relevant is spoons um, and forks and in a smaller size and in a bigger size to achieve a better price and to be relevant. And that is also a difference, actually, to, to Europe. Because knives are not used for eating in India, spoons are important. This set of four is thus available for 20 cents. It's very unique to India and only sold in India, but if we tell other countries, they might well also take it. Some things are different in India. John and his family moved over because of the job two years ago. Was the change difficult? It's harder. I mean, we came from the US, where everything was at your disposal, and you've come to a country that isn't quite as progressive yet when you talk about young children and things to do, but they still go to the cinema. They still can eat chicken wings, <laughs> maybe different flavours, but they get all the things that they love. So yeah, no, they absolutely love it, absolutely. Spices are one thing. Something more challenging is the fact that there are 26 official languages in India alone. The staff speak English with each other, but how do they look after customers? This is Telugu, the regional languages, it says welcome, and Christian's holding up the Hindi that says welcome. Both languages, yeah. and of course, and then we have you're one welcome. More. <laughs> yeah, of course, welcome. The classics have a hard time here. The most sold piece of furniture worldwide is this shelf stand, but in India, air humidity is high and there's a lot of dust. 
often the open solutions are, might be more solutions where more work is needed or where your things that you like and that you love will get dirty. Yeah, that means what we're showing here is Billy, of course, in the classical way is an open bookcase, but to the same time, we show Billy already with glass shelves, but also directly with doors to be able actually to say, okay, this is our solution for India for Billy. Leather is completely discarded out of respect for religion, as well as on the downfilling for bedding. Synthetic fibers are used instead. Now the doors open in Hyderabad. The first store in India opens its doors at 10 a.m. And we are keen to see how the Swedish response to Indian needs will be. Here, look, what's that? Goosebumps. Very good. We're so excited, but we are so prepared. We want it. Frenetic cheers for the first guests. But can the products convince them? And can the customers find their way at all? Most Indians have never been to a furniture store. What are they actually looking for? We are looking for some nice uh, uh, crockery, some utensils, uh, and in storage areas, neat storage areas. I was very much impressed by the uh, wash basin cabinet. We look over the shoulder of the first customers while shopping. How does the principle of self-service work? It's confusing for me because is this different? Because this and this seems to be different. So are many. Everyone has questions. That's why 900 employees work here. Three times as many as usually. But that wasn't easy either, Peter Betzel knows. The German has been living in India for six months. If you know where our employees come from, it's not like in other countries that you know they have retail experience or they're familiar with IKEA. It was all new here. Nobody knows the trade, nobody knows IKEA. 15% of our employees are women on purpose, some of whom come from families where women don't work at all. It's something in society that we're slowly changing. Christian is also busy explaining customers how to find things. The Swedish product names are also causing confusion. I am looking to buy uh, the scub hanging thing. It, it was written scub hanging. Yes. Exactly. You show it in the wardrobe area. Okay. And some of the products are for takeaway there. But the entire offer you find in home. It's also fish. here. Absolutely. So I can pick it from the exhibition also, and I can also pick it from here. Yes. Like this. The 26-year-old Indian also wants to buy a shoe rack. But how will he manage with the self-assembly? We go home with him. The programmer lives in a shared apartment with five roommates. His friend gives him a hand. Both of them are doing this for the first time. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? It definitely doesn't look like a shoe rack. And I have absolutely no idea how to get, get this done because, you know, all my life, we just got furniture ready-made from outside. People used to come and place it here. And I have to assemble this. It looks very, very difficult. The two of them start working. We'll see if a shoe rack ends up coming out of this. At the furniture store, most customers are still struggling with the showrooms. They can't fully comprehend that things are only meant to be looked at here. Indians would love to take the sofa home, just like that. We've had exhibit items disappear a few times. We'll end up finding them in front of the cash register. It's very common here. And also the flat packs. It's not well known here that our pieces of furniture have to be assembled on your own with these flat packs. Do it yourself isn't really popular in India. Assembled pieces of furniture are usually bought here. Do it yourself uh, uh, is not our thing as of now. But we maybe, have all, yeah. maybe we will uh, work with it because IKEA is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make it easier to get started, there's a very affordable setup service for your home. It starts at five dollars. 
certain things, you know, they are very delicate. See, I, we would prefer IKEA to come and assemble. Like the other things, we can do it. Around noon, all of the thousand seats in the world's largest cantina of the furniture store are occupied. Beef is not served. The meatballs here are made with chicken. To, to serve a cold salad is yeah. not very popular in India. No. Be Why? Because, of, because it's cold, yeah. all the starters, and we can see the same thing with the smoked salmon. Let's say it's not very popular to eat uh, cold. Uh, and I think that comes from also a food safety perspective. They would like to have very, very hot food and very, very spicy food. So here we do a little bit mix. Indians obviously like to try what tastes exotic to them. I'm in Tirupati. I came all the way 550 kilometers to see the idea how it is going to be the first one. Really? Hey, I'm from Tirupati. It gets really crowded in the evening. Indians are not early birds. That's why they're open until 11 p.m. We are really at the limit in terms of capacity. We have 5,000 people alone in this area. The market hall, as we can see here, is doing quite well at the moment, but we currently have people waiting up to two hours outside the store. 9,000 people can be in the store at the same time, and they seem to be doing okay on their own. The 20 cent spoons are in almost every basket. And to make sure that there are always enough shopping carts, Manfred and his father are there. German workmanship ensures that the baskets from the underground parking return to the ground floor again. We constructed a special lift, which we drove directly to 15 millimeters to the ground without needing to build a pit, and can now transport things between both floors. 24 cars fit in at the same time. When full, around 700 can be transported up from the underground car park every hour. They have already built lifts worldwide. But things are not that easy in India. In a country like India, which doesn't use the metric system, you can't even go and get a screw. If screws are missing, you have to improvise. If needed, screws were then flown in from Germany. In the Indian flat chair, a lot of screwing is being done as well. Even if you follow the instructions step by step, there are always some pitfalls. Sometimes a few more screws are needed, or even a whole board. Maybe it gets better as we use it. That doesn't sound good at all. They used the wrong screws. That's why the drawers also grind. We put it together for them again afterwards. The furniture store in Hyderabad is still packed, even four days after the opening. I bought so many things and all stocks are very good, very beautiful. I liked a lot. I came early in the morning, 10 o'clock, and just shopping since then. Six hours is not sufficient. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? You've been in here six hours? Yeah, yeah. almost. Do the products convince the customers? We sold the spoons for 15 rupees. They went like crazy. Everyone who paid for something had a spoon on them. On the first day, we sold 40,000 spoons. But in India, customers are very different. Everyone used our exhibition like a playground, just like a playground. Dancing on the beds, the kids in different areas that climbed up the ladder even if they were told not to. But in India, nobody's afraid of anything. And Hyderabad is just the beginning. A store will open in Mumbai next year. And there will certainly not be less challenges.